we first learned of the existence of the Denisovans in 2010. A group of archaeology students at the Novosibirsky Universitet had been sent on a dig to Denisova Cave on the southern tip of Siberia. They had been working under the directorship of Russia Academy of Science Department Head Anatoly Dervyanko and on-site supervisor Mikhail Shunkov. One of the students discovered a fragment of a finger bone. Shunkov thought it looked interesting and stuck it in his jacket pocket. At this point, the story took a somewhat bizarre turn. Derevyanko and Shunkov inexplicably decided to cut the bone in half. They sent one half to an institute in Paris where it was misplaced in a drawer and forgotten about for two years. The other half was sent to Svante Pebo's lab in Leipzig. It had been stored along with a number of ancient animal bones. One of Pebo's lab assistants, PhD student Johannes Krauss, was working late at night at the lab. He pulled up a plastic bag with a curious bone in it. Krauss extracted a tiny portion of DNA and ran the genetic sequences. As the sequencing machine reared to life, Krauss's eyes were glued to the screen, watching the results unfold. When the genetic sequences finally appeared, his heart skipped a beat. The results showed it was neither human nor Neanderthal. Shocked and exhilarated, he immediately grabbed his phone and dialed Svante Pebo. He delivered the news, a new species of hominids had been discovered. Pebo had been away at a science conference in the United States. He hopped on a flight and rushed back to Leipzig. A press conference was convened to unveil the Denisovans to the world. More Denisovan fossil discoveries. Pebo and Dervianko agreed on a tentative name, Denisovans, after the cave where it was found in Siberia. A paper was published in late 2010. Signers included Pebo, Dervianko, David Reich, Vince Biola, Mike Stone King, Johannes Krauss, et al. Genetic History of an Archaic Hominid Group from Denisova Cave in Siberia. Abstract. We have sequenced the genome of an archaic hominid to about 1.9 fold coverage. This individual is from a group that shares a common origin with Neanderthals. Continuing. This population was not involved in the putative gene flow from Neanderthals into Eurasians. However, the data suggests that it contributed 4-6% to of its genetic material to the genomes of present-day Melanesians. The Russians had also discovered a tooth partially embedded in stone. Krauss and his colleagues confirmed it was also Denisovan. In the paper, they outline how the tooth was distinct, thus establishing a separate species morphologically as well. For reference, Denisovan teeth had more complex cusp patterns compared to Neanderthals and modern humans. Their molars were larger and featured more pronounced cusps. For five years, the pinky bone and the tooth were all they had to go on. Paleoanthropologists were unsure how to classify the new species, leading to numerous debates. Between 2016 and 2018, two jawbones emerged, later determined to almost certainly be Denisovan. 
Both mandibles had equally bizarre backstories. In the 1980s, an anonymous monk praying in a Tibetan cave turned over a rock and discovered a jawbone. Years later, he turned it over to the lead Buddhist monk. The jawbone sat on a shelf for two decades until visiting Chinese archaeologists from Lanzhou University noticed it. They sent it to Pabo at his Leipzig lab, and it was determined to be Denisovic. In the late 2010s, another jawbone attracted the attention of scientists, this time from Taiwan. AncientOrigins.net 2018 The complete right lower jaw and teeth found in the deep waters of the Pangu Channel was pulled from the seafloor by a fishing net, dated through analysis to between 10,000 years ago and 190,000 years ago. In 2022, a tooth was discovered in Ta Pa Ling Cave in Laos with strikingly similar cusps to the Denisovan Cave specimen. Pabo's lab later determined it to be Denisovan. In the next section of the video, we will be delving into the topic of gene alleles in Denisovans. But first, let's take a quick refresher on some basic genetics terms. Britannica, an allele, is a variant form of a gene, one copy inherited from each parent. Continuing, when the copies of a gene on each pair differ from each other, they are known as alleles. Continuing, multiple alleles affecting the expression phenotype of a particular trait. The combination of alleles that an organism carries constitutes its genotype. Scienceofbiogenetics.com Alleles are created through mutations, which are changes in the DNA sequence. Continuing, genetic diversity is important because it allows populations to adapt to changes in their environment. Denisovan subspecies. A history of multiple Denisovan introgression events in modern humans. Amelia Huerta Sanchez is a professor of genetics at Brown University in Rhode Island. She is best known as the lead author of the groundbreaking study on Tibetans and Epos I hypoxia published in 2014. Linda Angaro studied and interned at the famed genetics lab at the University of Padova in Italy. She is now a postdoc at Trinity University in Dublin, Ireland. Abstract the identification of a new hominid group in the Altai Mountains called Denisovans was one of the most exciting discoveries in human evolution in the last decade. Continuing, the Denisovan fossil record consists of only a finger bone, jawbone, teeth, and skull fragments. Continuing, leveraging the surviving Denisovan segments in modern human genomes has uncovered evidence of at least three introgression events from distinct Denisovan populations. Continuing, here we review the evidence suggesting that several Denisovan populations who likely had an extensive geographical range introgressed into modern humans multiple times. Continuing, we further discuss how archaic variants have been affected by demographic history, negative and positive selection. We further propose possible lines of future research. Four distinct Denisovan populations. 
Linda Ungaro, Leakey Foundation, Who Were the Denisovans 2024? Many questions about the Denisovans remain unanswered. For instance, how genetically distinct were these populations and how many distinct groups existed? Continuing, we know that at least four distinct Denisovan populations interbred with modern humans. However, with further analysis, this number might increase, revealing an even more complex story. Hypoxia Inducible Factor EPOS-1 Angaro, in an interview with IFL Science, suggested that Tibetans are a prime example of quote-unquote adaptive integration. MSN, humans had sex with at least three different Denisovan populations, 2024. EPOS-1, locus, this particular gene can be traced back to the group of Denisovans that mingled with East Asians. MSN, quote, there is a genetic locus that confers a tolerance to hypoxia or low oxygen conditions, which makes a lot of sense as it is seen in Tibetan populations, end quote, said Angaro. Extraordinary resistance to hypoxia. Medical dictionary. Hypoxia is a condition of diminished availability of oxygen to the body tissues, which can have various causes and effects. Tibetans have developed a resistance to hypoxia, allowing them to survive at high altitudes with minimal adverse effects. In Southeast Asia, the Baju, an aquatic people living off the coast of Indonesia, have developed a unique resistance to hypoxia, enabling them to stay underwater for up to 13 minutes at a time. Epigenetics versus archaic hominid DNA as factors in the special traits of modern humans is a fascinating topic, but that's a subject for another day on this channel. Papalins Angaro, in her Leaky Foundation article, makes an even more shocking claim. The ancestors of modern Papalins experienced two separate introgression events with two distinct Denisovan groups. Angaro, continuing, Leaky Foundation. The people of Papua New Guinea retain up to 5% Denisovan ancestry, a much higher proportion than other groups. Continuing, Papuans are interbred with at least two Denisovan groups at different times. Echoing New Zealand genetics professor Murray Cox. Regular viewers of this channel are familiar with Auckland, New Zealand professor Murray Cox. Dr. Cox years ago proposed Denisovan subspecies D00, D01, D02, and D03. Indeed, Professor Cox since the late 2010s suggested in media interviews that D03 may not be Denisovan at all, but rather an entirely separate, yet to be determined, hominid species. A 2022 paper published by Professor Cox, Vaspiani et al. reached a stunningly similar conclusion to Angaro Huerta Sanchez. Denisovan introgression has shaped the immune system of modern-day Papuans. Paper, Papuans owe up to 5% of their genome to Denisovans. Unfortunately, the biological and evolutionary significance of these introgression events remains poorly understood. Continuing, here we investigate the function of both Denisovan and Neanderthal alleles characterized within a set of 56 genomes from Papuan individuals. Continuing, Denisovan ancestry accounts for up to 
of the genome of the indigenous peoples of islands Southeast Asia and Australia. Continuing, these components exhibit a deep divergence from the referenced Altai Denisovan genome. Continuing, this provides strong evidence for the occurrence of multiple Denisovan introgression events across time and space. As Angaro and Huerta Sanchez outlined in their just released paper, and as Professor Cox earlier hypothesized, multiple introgression events by distinct Denisovan populations could confirm separate Denisovan subspecies. The unique gene alleles of Tibetans known as Epos-1 are fascinating subject matter, one that we will undoubtedly highlight on this channel in a future video. Of course, we will be delving into the two, possibly three or four Papuan subspecies in future videos as well. Special shout out to my co-editor, Martha Christina of South Africa, for her extensive research in the production of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.